So what I'm gonna do for optimization is I'm just gonna remove a bunch. Do every so often. Okay, and I'll deactivate these. And I'll just see how that goes. Not bad, still good. All right, so that'll be a little bit more optimal for me. So we can create a prefab out of this now. So I guess the first thing we wanna do is right click here and reset so that we're right in the middle. We just have this at zero, zero, zero when we create our prefab right on here. Yeah, just drag it in down here, let go. Original prefab. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we can edit anything about a prefab. So we can uh, create some more variations of this uh, if we want, like where I've deactivated some. We can deactivate other ones and just make a different type of uh, broken crepe, basically. So we're going to wait till we have everything set up, and then we'll create some variants. We're going to actually create some skins uh, for the coin and for the, the crate as well. I think I want a TNT crate as well, one that's going to actually explode. Um, I'm going to mention now we are actually going to go, uh, we're going to uh, use a third-party asset for some special effects. We're actually going to get some sound effects, um, and we'll have everything set up uh, pretty cool like that. So I want to explain this, uh, this uh, rigid body a little bit more. So uh, with the prefabs in mind, let's go ahead and delete these. Let's delete our broken crate, let's delete our crate, and let's in prefabs drag out our crate. Okay. So if I add a rigid body to this, what that's going to do is, uh, as you saw how it reacts, so what's it, what it's going to do is actually react to colliders, um, as long as they're not uh, being used as a trigger. So what I mentioned before about the ghosts, if you have a box collider or a collider on something and you check is trigger, that's going to turn it into a ghost and basically make it in, uh, make it trigger an event. So we can tr uh, trigger code by using this little checkbox here, but you want to make sure that's not checked if you want it to react with uh, stuff like that. So as, as mentioned, it's going to give it gravity. It's also going to give it a mass. So this uh, crate here might want to be a little bit heavier than a little piece of wood, right? So let's change this to maybe like seven. And just see how that looks. So let's actually just duplicate this and drag it up. Let's drag it up. Let's move it over here. So uh, with gravity, what uh, when you hit the play button, what that's going to do is start moving time forward at a one-to-one -one scale. And we can affect that time scale um, with code. So we can change things to slow motion. We can change it uh, to pause, play, <clears throat> stuff like that. We can speed up time. We can do all kinds of stuff. So uh, with time at 1-1, one, one, when we hit play, we can just click play and watch how, what happens here. It's going to fall. It's going to knock onto that. And it's going to fall into its side. Right, so that's your simple rigid body physics. It's going to react with colliders in the world, anything that's a wall, as long as it has a collider itself without uh, without a trigger, right? So uh, that being said, rigid bodies will also push other rigid bodies around. So if you have a rigid body on your character, it's going to shove you around, especially this broken crate here, right, when it falls apart. So uh, on the subject of collisions, we can actually use layers up here where it says default, layer default. You get a few right off the bat, but we can actually create as many as we like. And we can add these layers. Basically, in code, we can uh, ignore some layers of collision if we want to. And that's a, uh, a really nice trick sometimes. So we're actually going to set ourselves up for our player already. So I'm just going to add a new layer. Let's say use layer 3. For some reason, that one's empty. I'm going to call this special effects. So this is going to use any colliders that are just for special effects, and they're not supposed to shove the player around everywhere, right? So I add this layer right here, and we're ready basically to uh, fix that issue when we come to it. So once you got that, just click anywhere in your uh, in your project here, and it'll get rid of that. And now we have actually that special effects layer right here. So all I want to do is double click my broken crate. It'll take me into this prefab uh, scene window. I want to select all of these that are using a rigid body. I want to change their layer to special effects. Okay, so this will actually react with the world. It'll react with the other special effect objects, but it won't affect um, our player, which is important, especially with the uh, that much physics going on. Okay, so we will actually have to add a code in order for that to work, but that's okay. We'll do that. Um, next, I think I do. Uh, I do want this rigid body here, so I'm gonna just delete that one. I'm gonna double click my crate asset here, just to mention again, just so you see. I'm gonna remove that rigid body component there, just so you can see. If you have a bunch of crates in the world, you can just come up here, add component, rigid body, and because it's on the same, uh, the parent has the box collider, so that's where we need to add the rigid body. The rigid body needs to be on the same com uh, the same mesh as the uh, the collider, the same object. Okay, we come back here, and there it is right there, right? Affecting uh, anything in this prefab window will affect all your prefabs in the world. Okay, so now that that's just important because, of, say, if I wanted two crates on top of each other like this, if I click play, time will still be moving in my scene view. So I can click this uh, crate here. I might move this out of the way. That's going to fall, right? So if the player happens to... Uh, uh, smash a cube down here while well, this one's there we want that one to fall down 
right? We don't want it to just float up in the air. So rigid bodies on these, I think, is going to be just fine. Uh, as mentioned again, these are a little bit light. So let's uh, double click here. Let's change our mass to seven, and uh, maybe eight. Sure. Okay, so I think that's. Uh, I think we're pretty much set up for our physics. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to bring in. Let's go to textures and let's go to our crash course textures. Let's bring in all our maps for our uh, our coin. Okay, and here we have the question for our normal map again. Here we're just going to say fix now, where I've explained how you can uh, easily do that, right? Fix now. So all it's going to do is go over here, right? Normal texture is just that default. You come over here, normal map, and you click apply. All good. Okay, so that's it for this one, guys. In the next episode, we're actually going to be setting up our coin. We're going to create some skins, and we're going to look at animations so we can start seeing our, uh, our looping animations uh, in our game world. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you in the next episode. Bye.